brief introduction to AngularJS. And uh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be putting this online for everybody to kind of, uh, kind of go through afterwards as well. So um, that will be available after the session is all uploaded to, I guess, to YouTube or something. And uh, people will be able to follow along if they want to go back and refer to the, the actual session. So let's go back in here and get this started. All right, so um, who am I? So I'm a software developer at Ecovee Inc. We do uh, smart thermostats, internet connected thermostats, home automation, that type of thing. Uh, it's a pretty cool place to work. We're, uh, right now I'm focused mainly on JavaScript based solutions, so both on the mobile side of things and also on the web. Um, we've been using a lot of AngularJS. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a really, really great framework that we've been uh, having a lot of great experience as well. Um, <laughs> I hear there's, there's uh, some contrasting thoughts from the audience, but uh, there's uh, what basically you want to look at the, uh, the tool chain that I'm looking at using right now. Uh, we, we're, I'm kind of involved with WebStorm, Yeoman, Grunt, uh, Bauer, uh, Carver Runner, and Jasmine. It's pretty standard Angular uh, tool chain. I'm not going to be getting into that too much. That's a whole talk unto itself, how you can get that certain development all set up and uh, working nicely within, within WebStorm or whatever editor you're using, using these tools. Um, but I thought I'd, I'd cover just kind of back off the top. Um, getting right into things, uh, what is AngularJS? Well, AngularJS is a framework from Google. Uh, it basically teaches your browser how to understand new HTML that you've defined via something that they call a directive. So um, you, have a, you have an HTML page and uh, you can augment its behavior by adding in these directives to add things like repeating, repeaters, um, to add things like two-way data binding. This basically means that I can update a model behind the scenes and it's going to be reflected in my UI automatically. I don't have to manage that uh, relationship of checking that a model can update it and that the front end now reflects the data properly. Um, it also brings in your standard MVC uh, separation concerns, um, like most modern frameworks do today, um, but also brings along injectable services. Um, this is not something I'm going to get into too much right now. I'm happy to talk through it at length, but I just want to touch the surface and show you some really cool stuff that one can do in Angular in 15 minutes. So um, the services get, enable stuff like um, XHR, query stream manipulation, there's a whole bunch of them that uh, come out of the box in Angular, but you can also define your own. So the best way to get started is actually, let's have a little live demo and build something really cool. Um, basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to attend this list application. We're going to be able to add new attendees, search attendees uh, across people off the list when they show up. And uh, all the full source and bullet plates are going to be available on my GitHub account. Um, it's down there. I'll put this up at the end for anybody that you know, wants to pull it down um, and play with it afterwards. So uh, I'm going to dive right into this and uh, let's get this going. So uh, I'm going to put this mic down and just project really loud. So if you can't, well, if, they, if somebody wants to hold it, that would be awesome. But uh, all right, here we go. All right. So so what I wanted to start with, um, essentially, I've got on the right hand, I basically the right hand side of basically my application. I've laid it out uh, much in just standard HTML and CSS. There's no Angular being involved here. Just a straight, simple, simple app that I've thrown together. Um, and we want to turn this into a full-on interactive app. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Angular uh, core component is based around this concept of directly. Uh, this is other additional attributes that you add to HTML, tags, uh, new tags, new attributes, new classes that augment your existing page. So a good example is uh, the granddaddy of directives is the ng app uh, directive. So what this is actually doing, it's going to tell my page that I'm actually a, an Angular application now. Um, and what this will do is Angular is going to go through and start up the most important part, which is the scope. Uh, it defines the scope for the entire body tag because of the attached to the body. And this lets me uh, create functions that I can use from my template or also um, attach models to. And we'll get to that in a second. In standard MVC style, uh, one of the core things that we deal with is a controller. Uh, if we want to add any kind of logic, 
We need a controller, um, and Angular gives you a really, really convenient way of doing that. So I have this container class that kind of wraps my entire application. I'm going to use another one of these directives, which is called, surprisingly, ng controller. And um, I'm going to come up with an AMO file, let's call this uh, list CTRL. Um, this is now going to look for a variable um, that behind the scenes that is this list controller. Um, so we're going to actually need to create this to actually to add some dynamic content to the to our pages. So if we actually add this in. We're going to create a new create a new uh, Jasper file here. Um, And we're going to call this list controller. Great. Now we've got this list controller function. It's it's empty, and uh, I'm going to use some nice features of uh, WebStorm. I can basically uh, set up some boilerplate really quickly, and I'm defining my list controller to provide the backend support for my application. Now you notice that the scope variable gets created automatically, and I mentioned earlier the scope is kind of where all everything, uh, all of the, the models, all of the functions that you're going to be using within a controller uh, get attached to. Um, so now we've got this list controller that's wrapping this, uh, that's wrapping my my container here, um, and we can start to do some interesting things. Um, one of those being if we look at this list on the side here of my app, I've got some people here. This is not being dynamically generated, so I. I kind of like to have this um, being pulled from my controller, for instance. So we're going to go ahead and define a actual um, variable on the, on the scope itself. And we're going to call this attendee list because we're an attendee, lit, attendee at, uh, app. And it's just going to be a simple array um, of objects. And uh, we, people need a name, so you know, my name's Alan, so We'll put Alan in there, and we need to know whether I'm present or not. I'm basically defining a model now, and any variable that's actually attached to the scope uh, is a model with an Angular. So um, now, if I'm present, I'm not going to be. I'm not having arrived at this app yet, so um, I'm not there yet. Set this property to false, and um, we'll make a couple of extra people here. Uh, we'll add another one just for. So we're going to an analysis that are on the scope now. Perfect. Okay, so now let's use this in the actual on the other side. Um, we have this base unordered list. What we're going to actually do is use another wonderful uh, directive called ng-repeat, which will repeat over that array that I created behind the scenes and add some dynamic content to this. So, um, by adding ng repeat, I can say persons, person in attendee list, which is now on the scope, so I have access to it from my, my view here. And uh, what should now happen is I can actually remove these other two guys because we're not interested in them at all. Um, it's dynamic content is being created, so uh, by saving this, you'll see the right hand side is now updated that I now have two items. Now, both of them are my name because uh, I'm not actually data binding to anything yet. So what I want to do is utilize the two-way data binding with an Angular, and uh, I'm going to reference that person uh, iterator and just say name. And all of a sudden, uh, I've got Alan and Alice showing up on the on the right hand side there. Um, so I've got some dynamic content going on now. I can uh, I've got a list. Um, next thing that would be nice to do is be able to check these people off, right? So you know, there's a checkbox here that I'm defined. Um, I can check them, but we'd like to have some sort of uh, something happen visually to really denote that this person is present. So if we go to this checkbox, we're going to use another nice directive called ng-model, um, which, which ties this input to uh, a model on the scope. So by connecting this ng-model, I'm going to, I'm going to call this, um, well, that's not what I wanted. Uh, so here we are, ng-model. Uh, we're, going to, we're going to tie this to um, a property uh, person not present. So now, behind the scenes, um, when I check this checkbox, um, it's actually updating that present uh, property. Um, 
we can also utilize, I, what I want to do is actually now create a class to cross these people off a list. I've got some CSS behind the scenes um, in this, this uh, class here called uh, present through. And we're going to utilize the data binding here to actually call that class. So much like we would normally, I can say present. Uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to use the data binding to person but present. Now, when I click these guys, that class should be applied automatically. And you'll see that um, now they're, they're being stroked, stroked out and uh, you know, we've got some more dynamic content happening. This is great, but we want to be able to add people to this list now too. So going down to this bottom section here, we have another input. Um, and what we want to do is tie this to uh, an NG model as well. So we've got this in input that uh, we want to be able to read from. Let's say, let's call this uh, new person. So now I'm expecting a new person has been created on the scope behind the scenes. And uh, we also want to have something happen when this button is clicked. It's clicked. So there's another, there's another directive called NG click, surprisingly. And I'm going to call a function add person. So, so now, when I click this button, add person is going to get called. It's not defined anywhere yet, so we have to flip over to our actual controller itself to define this. Um, we're going to attach add person to the scope, and this is a new function. And we want to basically push this on to the attendee list. So, um, the new person, we're adding this to the attendee list, so scope dot Attendee list, uh, push, and we're adding a new object here, um, name, which we will pull from that variable that we just pull up, uh, that we bound uh, with the ng model. So scope dot new person, and they're not present yet. So present is false. Great. So now this list is uh, doing something. Um, if I type something in here, uh, we should have something happening, but we're not. Uh, always a good time. Um, let's go to the person. So going back to the actual index here, um, this this model input will should update in real time. So so we have behind the scenes uh, this scope.addPerson function that's already defined uh, and it should be picked up right now. Now if we want to add a functionality to actually search this, uh, to search this list, we can utilize something called a, a filter. Um, and by filtering based on another model that we've defined, um, we can actually have real-time search from this text box up here. So let's call it search text and bind this to the input up here, uh, ng model equals search text. And when now these two will be linked together. So now if I type in ali, I get Alice. I type in alan, I get Alan. Um, makes it easy. I got four or five hundred people in this list. I can now easily find the person that's coming up. They show me their ID. Whatever, we're good to go. Um, so, for some reason, I am not 100 percent sure why my why my function isn't uh, firing off here. Oh, you know what? I do know why. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, but in any case, the. Uh, it shouldn't be a semicolon problem, but you know. Is that a new person? Like, where is that? No, I don't have to actually do it because I'm using the object literal notation here. Um, the scope that new person, this uh, should exist by this ng model call. Ng person, you need add a from the input? Uh, no. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be the name. Yeah, I know. In any case. Um, yeah, yeah, it might. Yeah, you know what? It might work. It's... Oh yeah. Hey, okay. There we go. I don't know. I don't know how to fix it, but 
Anyway, we're, we're adding, we're adding people. This is great. Fantastic. Uh, but we noticed that this is not getting cleared, right? So what we want to actually do is just null this out every time that we add a new person. And, uh, you know, we just want to say scope that new person is empty. So that every time, so that every time we update this guy, we've got, uh, It's going to clear it. Um, and so there we are. So we've got a fairly fully featured application now, um, built in Angular. It didn't take too long. We had a couple of road bumps along the way. But it uh, gives you a very quick introduction to the power of Angular, how directives can really augment your HTML um, in a very quick and easy way. And it, Angular itself gives you the power to define your own directives as well, to extend beyond what uh, you get out of the box. So I'd just like to open the floor to questions if anybody's uh, got any.